Engineering, a skill released in 2010, is all about exploring dungeons. It was the first 120 skill to be released into the game and promised to be a way for everyone to interact regardless of the stage of progress of their account. In this video I want to look at what engineering does well and what could be improved upon. No, I will release a video on if sailing should be a skill in the upcoming weeks and I will very likely use engineering since it's a good case study, but to simply put, no, it shouldn't. Since in most of my content discussions I end up talking about the problems, aka the negatives, and only then provide solutions, aka the positives, in this video I'm gonna switch it up. First I'm gonna talk about the things I like about the skill, and then we'll talk about the things I don't like. The first thing I enjoy about the skill, the accessibility. As I've mentioned in the intro, this was a skill that was supposed to be for everyone. As a result, it doesn't matter if you are eye combat level, eye scaling level, as dungeons will always be able to be finished by a certain group, meaning you can be a level 3 and have access to the engineering, or a max players and have access to the engineering. Ultimately, your engineering level is the biggest factor when it comes to the things you unlock in the dungeon. This is not to say that higher levels don't help, but contrary to other skills, here you can just do it together with anyone of any level and the only thing stopping you is if they have a certain type of lore available or not. The different approaches. The skill can be approached through different ways. Due to how the EXP works, certain methods will always be more viable than others, however you don't actively get punished if you decide to engage with the skill a bit differently. For instance, you can just do large floors with friends and have a bit of fun, or you can do all small floors and just try to optimize your time as much as you can. Again, some approaches will give more rewards, but there isn't a wrong way to approach the skill. If you want to take your own time and exhaust all the skilling nodes, you can do that. If you want to blaze through everything, you can do that. The random nature and lack of failure status really helps make the skill into something you can wrestle your own way. The depthness. Alongside with the ability to have different approaches, the skill itself provides the content to allow those approaches. As I've already mentioned, you can do large floors or small floors. Floors. You can also do minion floors, as you can tackle any specific type of floor, you can do the skill solo or up to 5 people. On top of that, different floor types provide different bosses and puzzles, large floors provide a different challenge and small floors, and so on and so on. It's up to you to experiment and figure out how you prefer to do the skill. The boss mechanics. I know this one is a bit weird uh, to put uh, here. Uh, this skill came out before EOC, meaning most boss mechanics are more akin to old school RuneScape point and click gameplay than smashing your keyboard to activate abilities type of gameplay. While some bosses are a bit annoying in their mechanics, especially if you are trying to optimize and min max runs, they are all actually pretty clever. The bosses aren't overly complex by any means, they are actually super simple, usually only have one to two mechanics each, but that simplicity is what made me appreciate them. Now, a days with EOC, most people probably won't realize most of the mechanics because you just burn through the bosses, but let's take the gluttonous behemoth. It's a very simple boss, you damage it and it heals by eating the corpse of a dead animal. So your first instinct is to just while step in front of the dead animal, and that's exactly what you need to do. This is the type of stuff you see in quests, for example, that I personally find enjoyable, and while when it comes to grinding some of the bosses, the mechanics can make them less fun, when you are still trying to figure them out, they can make you feel pretty smart when you understand what's actually going on. The rewards are still pretty useful both from the normal shop and the elite dungeon shop. These are rewards that are useful everywhere in the game, just like how outside of Demonheim the engineering rewards are just the resource dungeons you see around Gilenor. They aren't massive, but they help when you are doing other things. The shops have items that essentially do the same, they help you around the game without being mandatory, just a little something for having done the content up to this point. So now that we've touched on the positives, let's talk about the negatives. And, well, the skill favors higher levels. Yeah, remember how we talked about optimizing the skill and that being a good thing? Well, if you are lower level, 
good luck doing that. I said the skill was accessible and it 100% is, as anyone from any level can do it and earn XP in it, but the lower level you are, the more miserable you will feel. Trying to get weapons or armors as a low level can be a arduous task and it will be not that fun. Being stuck with a level 1 weapon because you haven't trained your fletching even though you can equip higher levels does not feel good, I can tell you from personal experience. On top of that, monster scaling is a bit weird. Monsters will scale to your levels and your capabilities, but at the same time they have caps, meaning that if your combat level is low, you are about to have the most miserable experience ever the higher floors you go. Uh, you know, let's say that you are level 40 magic, but have unlocked furnished floors, well, bosses will have a nice amount of HP and you will be stack eating it and praying you do damage due to the low hit rates. If the skill is supposed to be done by everyone, I don't get why monsters have a hard combat cap like that, especially since you don't gain anything from the dungeon being easier to grind by having monsters be lower level. Furnished floor bosses seem to have the lowest combat of 91 for example, which is miserable when you are like 50 combat as you will always splash. The boss will do almost no damage since it's a pre-OC boss and you will just sit there, just splash 24-7 because the monster's defense is way too high for you to actually be able to eat anything. These issues could simply be solved by rebalancing the skill and the caps especially that bosses have. However, there is yet another way lower levels get screwed, which are the skilling doors. So a dungeon has multiple types of rooms, one of them are the skilling doors, doors that you can open by bypassing a certain skill level in one of your skills ranging anywhere from strength to farming for example. Problem here is, if you are lower level, you will be able to get doors that require over 100 levels from your level. This is to encourage players to use tools such as divination to bypass certain skill doors or potions, however, there is simply nothing that can bypass 100 levels. Meaning that if you are a low level player, the experience of exploring a dungeon will be a frustrating one. It's made worse when you factor in that higher level players very very rarely actually do need to use these tools in order to increase their levels to bypass skilling doors since they have the boosts from elite dungeon store and garage and outfit. This does not make it impossible to finish a dungeon, however not being able to visit every room makes for a frustrating experience as well as making you sacrifice XP since there are bonus rooms and bonus rooms give you extra XP upon completing the floor. The solution is more obvious, I think, just make it so you can at least always boost to surpass the door, or just outright remove them. I don't really see a high need for them, they do provide a nice amount of XP, but again, you should at least be able to boost for it. And then you also have the optimizations themselves. Yeah, so, like, things like double surge, or magic level to cast teleports, or diaries completed for free runes, is fundamental to optimize the skill. Lower levels have no access to this, which makes the skill feel super slow at early levels. This to me isn't as big of an issue, since it's more about optimizing and I don't think anything should be changed here, but I just wanted to include it to give you an idea of how much better the skill is to do at higher levels. Some boss mechanics are outdated. Uh, yeah, I've touched on this before, but some mechanics are just outdated, and while it can be fun when you are first exploring the skill, considering this goes up to 120 or 104 million XP, there's only so many the Ice Fiend is immune to your attacks that you can stomach. Now, since the original video came out, Jagex did a bunch of tweaks like the Luminescent Ice Fiend only having two phases instead of the original four, but still, it is enough fun. Uh, Kalgar having a cutscene and doing those animations of crossing over the lava pit is also not very fun. I'm glad that at least we had some tweaks here, uh, although I do wish we got a bit of a rework to these mechanics, or maybe just a reward that allows you to surpass these things. Like, what if the engineering shop just had an ability to damage the ice thing, ice fiend, through its immune phase. Lower level players would still have to interact with that mechanic, but players grinding the skill going for 120 could make use of their tokens and buy a reward to make the skill better for them. This already happens with the Garajan outfit, since it has the ability to not slide in icy rooms, making those puzzles arbitrary, so I don't think players would mind too much. And lastly, earning tokens just isn't fun. 
the best way to earn tokens is by grinding the same mini boss in elite engines while elite engines are dungeons i don't think you should be able to ignore an entire skill when it comes to earning tokens the main issue here is that tokens is tied to xp meaning unless you can earn more xp per hour than you can grind elite engines people won't ever do actual engineering to grind for tokens unless you are a nerd like me but that's not the point. I think the solution here could simply be making the way you earn tokens different than the way you earn XP. Sure, you still earn tokens by earning XP, but the meta for both would be different. Instead, what I would like to see done is token gain being equivalent to items used in dungeons. Think how many nodes you have depleted, how many enemies you have killed, how many items you have crafted, and things of the sorts. I know that killing all enemies offers bonus XP, and I know that depleting every node also gives bonus XP, but given that tokens is exclusively tied to XP, unless that bonus XP is overall more XP per hour than just blazing through the dungeon, people won't do these things. If tokens are tied to resources instead, you still earn XP, but the focus would be more on the tokens and would allow for a different approach to dungeons altogether depending on which objective you have, as well as incentivize people to engage with the skilling portion of the engineering, which very few people do, especially outside of the nodes that don't actually give decent amount of XP, like divination. I know a lot of people dislike the engineering for a wide variety of reasons. Uh, there is actually a lot that needs to be done uh, to the skill, in my opinion, to bring it more up to speed. However, in this video I just wanted to point to the things I liked and disliked and give an overview of it. Personally, I like the skill. I think it has even more potential than the one displayed currently in the game. Of course, it does take time and effort and honestly, I'm somewhat hopefully someday we'll see at least a few more tweaks done to it since we did already have some tweaks made just a few months ago, like three months ago. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, otherwise Jagex will take your 120 cape away and you'll have to redo this skill again.